Dyeing leather is a fun way to personalize your projects, but it does take some know-how. So today we're gonna to show you some techniques to create professionally dyed leather goods. Welcome back to our Sailrite workbench. We're gonna jump right into things. So there's three steps to dyeing leather, prepping the leather area and the leather, dyeing the leather, and sealing the leather. All these steps can be done with different products and in different ways. There isn't just one correct way to dye leather, there's actually multiple, and we're gonna showcase a variety of techniques so that you can make the best decision for your project. So let's start with the prep work. Some items that you'll need are gloves to protect your hands from being stained, a safe surface to work on. We're gonna be using some cardboard, but you can also use paper or plastic. And lastly, just ensure that you have a space with ventilation. Next, you will need to grab your piece or pieces of leather. We're gonna be using a bunch of scrap leather just to showcase a variety of leather dyeing results. Now, if your leather has been treated or sealed in the past, or if it's just dirty, you'll wanna use a deglazer to clean off any unwanted oils or debris. Even if your leather isn't necessarily dirty, if you've had it in your DIY space for more than a day, there's a good chance there's still a bit of dust or something on it, which is all gonna affect the dyeing process. So we would recommend at least wiping it down with a dry rag. Now that the leather is clean, we would recommend applying some Neat's Foot oil to condition the leather. Because leather dyes tend to dry out leather and leave it brittle, we suggest this step as a way to keep the leather soft. Neat's Fit Oil can also be used in other steps of the leather crafting process, so it can be a very versatile product. To apply the Neat's Fit Oil, you can either use a wool dauber, a sponge, a rag, or even just a scrap piece of foam. Apply a generous portion to the leather and let it thoroughly soak in. A quick side note to make at this time, if you want to stamp your leather, we recommend doing so before the dyeing process. Because if you stamp your leather after dyeing, you can risk exposing the undyed layer of the leather. We let the leather set for a few hours so that the Neat's Foot oil can dry. Neat's Foot oil will discolor the leather slightly, so make sure you take that into consideration when choosing your dye. Speaking of choosing your dye, we highly recommend testing your dye out on a scrap piece of leather prior to applying it to your application. Leather dyes can be lighter or darker depending on how many coats you apply, as well as the concentration of the dye. So save yourself from ruining a project and use a scrap piece of leather for this testing. We're gonna be dyeing our leather in the dye turquoise, and here we have a range of one, two, three, and four coats of dye. We're gonna be aiming for this video for the three coat look. Here at Sailrite, we have two different types of dyes. We have Phoebing's Leather Colors and Phoebing's Leather Dye. Both of these products permanently change the color of your leather, but leather colors are water-based and leather dyes are alcohol-based. Here is an example of how each will look. So although the leather colors and the leather dye aren't the exact same shade of blue, you can still see that the leather colors has a very rich color palette as well as the leather dye. In this video, we're gonna be using leather dye but you can use leather colors in the exact same techniques that we're gonna be using with the dye. Both of these products come in four ounce bottles, which is great for testing them out or for use on smaller projects. We also stock 32 ounce bottles for larger projects or for more frequent use. There are a few methods for using either that we'll go through today. So you can use a wool dauber, a sponge or scrap piece of foam, dip dyeing, or airbrush and paintbrush we will show you the different applications and methods using the leather dye. We are gonna start with a wool dauber. When you get a four ounce container of dye, it'll come with a wool dauber. You can also buy these separately in packs. This tool works well for smaller pieces of leather. We used it on a leather stool project, which you can check out in the info button in the top right corner. With the wool dauber, you can apply it in a circular motion or in more of a wiping motion. With the wool dauber, your method and coverage will look a bit uneven since you're moving the dye around, but it will still create a cool rustic vibe. So we would suggest this tool if you're going for a weathered, worn in look, if you're working with small pieces, or if you're dyeing the back of leather. We have found that if you're dyeing the back of leather, this tool is easier than a cloth or sponge.
The next method that we're gonna be showing you is using a sponge. So after some testing here at Sailrite, we found that a scrap piece of foam works just as well as a sponge. So that's what we're gonna be using. So take your sponge or foam block and put some dye on it. So like the wool dauber, you can use the foam or sponge in a few different ways. You can apply it in circular motions or you can apply it by wiping it across the leather. Sometimes a combination of these will create the most even coverage. This method works well for larger applications because it covers a large surface area faster than using a dauber. The third method that we will be demonstrating is dip dyeing. This method dyes both the front and back sides of the leather evenly. A note on this method is that it will use more dye and soak into the leather more, which will require a longer drying time. You will need a container to do this method. So here we have a plastic bin that is filled with dye. Then we're gonna completely submerge the leather and lift it out. You can tap the excess off on the sides of the container and lay it on a safe surface. Now an important part of dip dyeing is to quickly wipe off any excess because you don't want the excess pooling and looking splotchy. This method results in a very uniform look. You won't have the same risk of uneven spread as with using a dauber. And you also don't have to worry about the edges or the back being undyed. Because you can dye the whole thing in one go, it can also be a quicker method. You will just need the correct size container for your pieces. The fourth method for dyeing your leather we're gonna talk about but not show. However, we still wanted to give it as an option for you in your leather work. You can airbrush dye your leather or use a paintbrush for more precise dyeing. Both have their pros and cons. Airbrush is a very even spread, but you will need lots of tools and an air compressor to do so. For painting, this is a great option for more precise coloring on a detailed project, but it'll take more time. Those are the main ways to dye leather. Once these pieces have dried, we will come back and talk about the third and final step, which is sealing your leather to protect it and lock in the color. The first step when the pieces are dry is to buff the surface and condition it with some Otter Wax Leather Salve. We have found that conditioning both before and after dyeing adds a great deal of flexibility to the leather piece. This is an optional step and not required. Lastly, we need to seal our leather. Even after the dye has dried, it will start to have color rub off if you don't seal it. So there are a few different items that you can use to seal the dye. There's leather balm, bag coat, resiline, and leather sheen. Each of these products offer certain qualities of coverage and different finishing looks. So we're gonna use each on a piece of leather and talk through the qualities. We would recommend using a sponge or foam rather than a dauber because some of these sealants can create bubbles or streaks when dried. Now let's talk through the options. Leather Balm protects and seals dyed colors while also softening and moisturizing, but it doesn't provide water resistance. This balm dries to a matte finish and is only intended for smooth leathers. Bag Coat also protects and seals dyed colors on smooth leathers while not providing water resistance. However, Bag Coat dries to a satin finish and does not soften or moisturize the leather. Resoline provides a flexible, durable, and water-resistant finish to dyed, antiqued, and polished leathers. This product will produce a medium to high gloss finish without altering the color of your leather. Lastly, Leather Sheen works very similarly to Resoline by providing a high gloss finish that is water-resistant and prevents dye rub off, but it's only intended for smooth leathers. Each protectant comes in four ounce bottles, which is great for testing them out or using them on smaller projects. They also offer 32 ounce sizes for larger projects or for more frequent use. No matter which dyeing method that you choose, we really do recommend testing them all out with your dye on a scrap piece of leather. This will help you just get a better feel of what would fit your preference, needs, and desired look. We sell leather both by the side and in panels. So if you're interested in a leather project, big or small, check out our offerings in the description below. And if you wanna see more leatherworking videos, be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out our leather crafting playlist. 
Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.